Let's get going. Day two. Uh, it says here, if the domain of f of x equals all this is restricted to these values, graph f negative one of x. First question I have for you, what is that symbol mathematically mean? Inverse. Last class, we talked a technique. If you're solving for an inverse, what's the mathematical technique to find the inverse? We switch x and y. So if we switch x and y, the question, the the question becomes, I don't see an X, uh, excuse me, I do see an X. I don't see a Y. What represents Y in the function? F of, X. F of X. That right there is the Y. So the original function is Y equals three X plus one squared plus two. So when I go to solve this, I'm going to switch X and Y. So we're gonna graph the inverse. When we graph the inverse, we're actually gonna type in X equals three y plus one squared plus two. Just like that, is that all I'm gonna type in? Ah, there's a restriction. The original is restricted. And do you remember how, what symbols we use for this? The original, it says the domain, which is the x value. The x is restricted. And we do that with the squiggly line, which means it, the, the original is restricted with the x. And now I'm going to substitute a thousand in for infinity. If it's a bracket, does that mean less than or less than and equal to? Yeah, there you go. What about infinity? Just less than. You would do it like that. Okay, for the inverse, though, what are we supposed to do on the inverse? That's correct. Very good, Daryl. We're switching our X and Y. So it'd be negative one is less than or equal to y, which is less than 1,000. That's what you should graph to get the solution. I'll give you a moment to do it on your own. Now I'm gonna move on to number two. It says write an equation, g of x. If the graph of f of x equals x squared is transformed using the given steps and the order shown. So what I'm gonna do here is I will kind of help you out. I know you're supposed to write the equation, but I'm going to graphically represent uh, each transformation. And then we'll try to, as a class, see if we can write uh, this one to get the correct answer. I want you first to go and graph this. So go over to your graph and, and graph f of x equals parentheses one slash two, one divided by two to the power of X, review question from last class. What would you call that? Exponential growth, exponential decay, natural law, or square root function? That's exponential decay right there. It's an exponent and it's decaying over time. The X is in the exponent, that's why it's exponential and it's decaying. So that's exponential decay. Okay, so now I wanna put that on my graph. We start here. This is the original graph, whoops, F of X. There's our original graph of x, f of x. Now on yours, I ask you to write equations as we go. So the way I did it is I said, okay, g of one of x would equal what? And you'd have to write the transform equation. But let's talk about this first. It says it reflects across the x-axis. If f of x, I'm just gonna take one random point. Let's just say that point. Would I reflect it to the right or would I reflect it down to cross over or go across the x-axis. Which way is it reflecting? Across the x. I mean, which one goes across the x? Going right or going down? Yeah. Down. So this it reflects downward. And so our new graph would look something like this. So now let's talk about the equation. I'll call that one G1. G1. Okay, if, uh, if it's reflecting downward, that's a vertical transformation. According to HIVO, down is on the inside or outside? It's vertical. Outside. outside. And what makes something reflect? Multiplying, dividing, add or subtract, or a negative? A negative. You need to make the equation negative on the, did you say outside or inside? Outside. So the way the answer, this first value would look is negative and then a one half to the power of X. Do you follow how I'm writing out this equation, what I'm doing here? Yes. Okay, because I'm not going to do them all, but I just want to get you started. That would be the first equation. Now it says to vertically stretch by a factor of five. 
vertically stretched. So it's already telling you vertically. So where is this transformation going to be located? Uh, let me ask this, inside or outside? outside? Outside. And to stretch something, is that multiply, divide? Multiply. Add or subtract? Oh, you all are already answering. But I'll go ahead and finish. Is it multiply, divide, multiply. add or subtract, or negative? Multiply. multiply. You are multiplying on the outside. So that ought to be easy enough. Where should the five go then? In between negative and one half. I agree. So G2 of X would look like negative five times one half to the power of X. And what that would do is it would just multiply every value by five. And so this graph, uh, this, if I had drawn it properly, this graph gets really close to zero. And so ultimately what happens when you multiply something really close to zero by five, what is something, or what is five times zero? Zero. zero? zero. Multiplying this side of the graph doesn't change it much. However, let's just say this value was at negative two. If this was at negative two, I put a two, negative two. What happens to that if you multiply it by negative five? Negative it would go to negative 10. It would go down to way down here to negative 10. So at this point, it'd become down here. And so it's going to just fall steep, like fall faster is basically what's going to happen. So you'd have something like that. That might not have been steep enough, but that's the idea is this graph would fall steeper, fall quicker. So that would be G2. G2, if this one is G1. All right, and now next, translate four units right. To go right, is that inside or outside? Inside. inside. Now, I want to point out the X is the inside. So you need to do this in the power. I'm going to stop here and let you try it on your own. You're going to try G3. But I'm telling you right now, it needs to be in the power of X that you do this transformation something up here. I'm just going to do dots up there. You need to do it up there in the power. Finally, it says uh, translate it three units up last. Plus three here. I agree with that. Inside or outside? outside? Outside. So you should end with a plus three. That leaves you with just one thing left to do on your own. You need to figure out how to make it go to the uh, four units right. But I agree with all this that you've said so far. Your answer looks something like that. You just need to figure out how to make it go right three units. We're going to now pick up uh, last class. We did the first 12 problems. Today, we're going to pick up with 13 and go through number 25. So we're going to finish the first half of the packet today. The goal is go 13 through 25. So first off, let's start with uh, before I actually work through this problem, I'm going to use an illustration here. Uh, I'm pulling out a coin. Uh, it's a dime. All right. So I want you to think about this dime I'm holding right here in my fingers. I know if you're listening to the video later, this will be hard, but you can't see it. You just have to process it. That's a dime. On the front end, if you looked at this dime, or let me just tell you, just in general, how much is a dime worth, money-wise? Ten cents. Okay. I sit on my desk, and you come over and look at it. It's sitting flat, and you see a head on there. How much is it now worth? Still ten cents. Okay. I flip it over, and, uh, man, I don't even know what's on this dime. It looks like some type of plant, a torch and a tree. How much is it now worth when it's flipped up that way? You call it tails, by the way. So you'd call it a tail. How much is it worth? 10 cents. Okay, so it's still worth the same thing. Is the picture the same though? No. So even though the picture looks different, it still has the same value, right? Today, almost all the problems that we're looking at today, not all of them, but most of the problems we looked at today are going to be one of two things, either dealing with domain or dealing with discontinuities. Mathematically, they are different things. However, to solve them, you're going to use the same technique. So why do I have that illustration with the dime? Mathematically today, domain and discontinuities, we're going to solve the same way. It's kind of like they have the same value. They're both worth 10 cents. They solve them the same way. However, the way you write your answer will be different. One's going to look like a head. The other one's going to look like a tail. Does that make sense of what I'm talking about? So domain and discontinuities, mathematically, we're going to solve the same way. 
Truthfully, domain means where the X values exist. Do you know what discontinuities mean? Where the X does not exist. So you see what I mean, how they're kind of like opposites, but mathematically, we're gonna use the same process to solve. That's why I just use a coin, meaning a coin, though it has two sides, it has the same value. It's the same math behind the two. Okay, having listed all of that, let's start with our first number 13 here. It says, what are the domain and range? I'm gonna start with domain. Domain means, which for kind of values? X. Truthfully, domain means where the X exists. Where X exists. That's truthfully what the domain is. Uh, this picture of graph actually has four segments to it. I'm gonna call it four segments of graph on this. I know it kind of looks like three to most people, but I'm gonna call the first one here in red, I'm gonna call this piece number one. Let me kind of draw it out. I'm gonna call that piece one. Piece two, it's gonna pick up and go uh, this little parabola. That's piece two. Piece three is here. And finally, piece four. Now, here's, uh, this is the one type of problem I did not get to show last class. This, I would not call this a Desmos problem. I would not call this a formula chart problem. You might call it some vocabulary, but you wouldn't call it transformations. The one I would call it is interpreting a graph. That's what this is, interpreting a graph. That's the type of problem we have here. Uh, when I wanna find domain, I'm looking where on this graph the X's exist. And I like to use trash compactor technique. You may remember earlier in the year, what I did is pretend that you have, if you have trash, you bring it up by the street on a particular day, the dumpster drives by, grabs it, it dumps it, and then it smashes the walls in. Do y'all remember that, how I talked about that? Yeah. On, on my picture, what I'm gonna do is let's, uh, whoops, wrong button, is uh, imagine, as best you can, imagine this line smashing this entire graph straight down. It doesn't get shifted left or right at all. Everything gets smashed straight down here. Technically it would be smashed to the x-axis, but uh, to make it cleaner, I'm gonna smash it straight down. If I smash this graph straight down to here, let me make this now an x-axis. Let's do this as an x-axis. So here we go. Uh, here's my x-axis. If I smashed it straight down, the first question I have, this red piece, is it going straight down or is it going to the left a little bit? Okay, so for domain, when I redraw this, I need to draw this arrow going left from there. It goes left and this graph goes, travels all the way to negative three with an open circle. So when I flatten out piece number one, that's how piece number one appears as domain. Domain just means flatten it out. I have flattened it and that's what the first piece looks like right there. Now I wanna pick up on piece two. If I flatten this piece two, where does it start from? Negative, Negative three. And again, it's just, it's, they share that open circle and it ends where? Three. three. It ends at three. So you just connect it all the way from negative three to three. Just connect it all the way across, okay? Uh, piece number three. Piece number three, how does it start? It starts at three with an open circle. How far does it continue? Four. It approaches four, does it ever get there? No, so here's what looks a little different. I would not draw an arrow going straight up. That arrow is going straight up now. I would just do an open circle here just to symbolize that it doesn't actually get to four. It approaches it, but it never actually gets there. So I'll do an open circle at four. And what about the fourth piece? Where does it start from? Four, does it hit four? It approaches four, so it's open as well, but it continues on to the right forever. So it would look like this. Okay, so now let's evaluate our domain. Looking across the bottom, does this graph go left forever? Yes. Does it go right forever? Okay, it does go left forever, does go right forever. Is there any breaks in between on the domain? Yes, yes. it breaks at negative three. It breaks at negative three. Four. And I hear at four. Why not at three though? 
one's filled in one's not filled in so when you smash it down is there a trash in that spot or no trash in that spot there's trash the blue fills it in there is trash so the only breaks would be at negative three and four so how would you write that with domain you write where it exists so you'd say it exists from negative infinity until negative three so your domain would be from negative infinity until negative three like that a union means that there is a break and there's another piece coming. So it breaks at negative three and the next piece goes from negative three to four. Negative three to four. Uh, why it's not three is because this one fills it in. Like if you're thinking trash compactor, when it compacts down, this spot fills in that one. And so for domain, though the graph itself is four segments, the domain would not be broken apart there. The domain would just stay continuous. It's going to only have three intervals. So, uh, though the again, though the graph itself is four different segments, this domain, every x value is used in between here, the domain itself is continuous between the blue and the green piece. There's no break between the blue and the green for the domain, not uh, in the actual graph, but the domain. So, this would pick back up at four and go on till infinity. So that would be your uh, uh, domain, which I do think you have the answer at this stage, but I'm gonna continue on as if you don't. If we wanna find range, what I want you to assume to find range, what's different is you smash everything to the y-axis. But for clarity, I'm gonna smash it all over here to the right side. So if everything got smashed over this way, everything got smashed over this way, the red piece, You'd have an arrow here all the way up to open circle there. And this would be connected with a flat line because it just got flattened to the right. The blue would go open circle up to 15 down. And then it would fill it in on this backside like that. And then the green would be open all the way up with a solid line or an arrow. And then the purple arrow down. And here it just kind of curves and approaches so it'd be an open circle. All right, so this range, does it go down forever? Yes, does it go up forever? Okay, so now the question, are there any breaks? I see this one's filled in. Here I have two open circles, but a solid line in between. What does it mean if you have a solid line going through an open circle? Is it continuous or I mean, is it filled in or not filled in if a solid line is there? Oh, it's, filled it's filled in. The red, though it only doesn't look like dots, this, the red line would fill those spots in. So this is, uh, the range is continuous. There's no breaks in the range. So it would be from negative infinity to positive infinity. There is no breaks on that range. And so that'd be the answer number 13. So I did a lot of explaining there, but uh, I wanted to make sure you grasp how that works. You may. All right, number 14. Now I get to switch to more of the fun stuff. I think anyways, it says, what's the domain? And it gives us a function here. What's the domain of this function? How y'all think we should go about solving this one? Graph it. Yeah, let's go graph it. Uh, and let me blow it up bigger. You could do algebra. Yes, you can do algebra on all these. So uh, do you remember your rules with oh, so there? What's the, you cannot divide by zero. Uh, the domain rules, if you remember this, you assume the domain is all reals. You assume it's all reals unless you see one of three things. The first thing was you cannot divide by zero. The second thing you could not do was a square root. We're not allowed to take a square root of negatives. negatives, which means it could be positive or it could be equal to zero, but not negative. And the third one had to do with logarithms. Uh, do not remember what logs you cannot have? You can't have a log that's negative, nor can you have a log that's zero. A log must be positive. So those are the three rules. Okay, in this problem, what are we looking at that we have happening? Division. So the thing is, 
the division cannot be equal to zero. So if you want to do the algebra, you would just solve it this way. You'd say x squared plus 3x cannot equal zero. I'm going to show you graphically. So algebra fans can solve that that way. I'll show you algebraically how to do this. So I'm going to go to the graph, start fresh. If I'm graphing this, I type in the equation f parentheses x equals, uh, what's the numerator? Just x. And the denominator is x squared plus 3x. Okay, so that would be the whole function. And you can try to get the domain from here, but it's tricky. Why do I say it's tricky? Because there might be a removable. Desmos won't show you a removable right away. So here's the trick that I want you to be aware of. If you're going to use the calculator to remember that what breaks up a division problem, what are you not allowed to divide by? Zero. Zero. So if you just type in the denominator alone, it'll tell you where the domain breaks because you cannot divide by zero. So wherever your denominator equals zero, you will have a break on the green graph. Let me turn off the blue for a second. How many zeros do you see on the denominator's graph? Two. These are the breaks. You cannot equal negative three. You cannot equal zero. So if you solve that algebraically, you would come up with x cannot equal negative three, and you cannot equal zero. There's another way of writing this uh, using interval notation. Because again, that I'm telling you where it does not exist. Truthfully, domain is where it does exist. So you most often will see it written this way. They'll say it exists everywhere except for those two points, meaning everywhere from negative infinity all the way until negative three. The graph would exist everywhere in between here. It would not exist at negative three, so it'd be a parenthesis. It would also exist between these two numbers. So between negative three and zero, the graph would exist. But then we'd have a second break. Again, a union symbolizes that there's a break in between here. There's a break at negative three. There's going to be a break at zero. But the graph would exist everywhere except for negative three and zero. That's probably how, the, how I would assume the answer would be written you were taking the test for real. That's how I would assume the answer would look. I'll come back over here. I'll show you one more time. We got this by graphing the denominator. That's where the zeros were. So now that we know it's a negative three and zero, watch this. I'm going to turn off the denominator and turn on the real function again. Which break could you see on your own just graphing the function? Negative, negative three. We can see the, don't remember what type of break that is? Infinite. That's the other side of the coin. Remember, domain tells you where it does exist. Discontinuity tells you, tells you where it doesn't. It doesn't exist at negative three. That's an infinite discontinuity there. The one it doesn't show you is at zero. And so if I went to zero, what happens when I hit zero? Undefined. Not just undefined, but open circle, which means what type of break is that? Removal. Removal. Yeah, it's flashing on me. There it is, removal. But you can see that it doesn't show you that unless you know to click there. The way to make it tell you where you click is just to graph the denominator. Then you know, okay, zero is one of the spots that I should click to find the removable, which I need to turn that off so I can click zero again. That's how you could find a graph that uh, to check zero. Or you could do table. I heard a student last class say, hey, what about table? Yes, you could do table as well. It'll tell you zero there. And what was our answer? Their answer negative three. Yeah, they would say undefined, so I'm going to take So, plethora of options. That's how you can do that. Uh, I didn't do the algebra, but yeah, you could just factor. And that would be uh, that would be negative three. I mean, negative infinity through to uh, three, negative infinity. Yeah, this is just saying the graph exists everywhere to the left of negative three. It exists everywhere between negative three and zero, and then everywhere to the right of zero. Yeah, that's exactly what it's saying. How would you know if it was graphics? If it were in graphics? Right. You mean like, oh, if it's a bracket? Yeah. Sorry, math makes everything harder. Uh, it would be a bracket only if, so like on this graph, if let's say these two pieces weren't here uh, and you just saw it, the graph just ended with the, uh, put on, if this graph just happened to end with the blue piece right here, then it would be a bracket because it's a solid dot on a real number, and so you just use a bracket. They would tell you it's a solid number. Yes. 
uh, you will not see that from an equation. You just won't. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, I want to pick up number fifteen. Number fifteen. Can I use the calculator to help me out, or do I have to use trash compactor on this one? Why do I have to use trash compactor? Why? What makes me have to use trash compactor this time? Because it's just a graph. There, it's no equation. Yep. So, uh, admit, imagine that this graph got smashed. I want to take it to the bottom so I've written right on it. So, imagine everything gets smashed here. How many segments of graph does this have? Three. I agree. Let's call this three. So, this piece I'm going to do is a red. So, this one, I smash this down. It looks like it goes from negative two. And it is continuing to go to the left. So I'll draw an arrow here. So we have that. The second part is parabola. Starts on that solid dot, goes up and around, down. So it starts at negative two, that's a solid dot. It continues on being flattened out and goes to three, the value of three. And then finally, this third piece, it begins open circle, continues on to the right. So we have an open circle, continuing on. Okay, so question, for domain, you're just talking about where the graph exists. You're not talking about, is there a separation or anything like that? You're just talking about, does the domain exist or not exist? I'm looking, it goes left forever, it goes right forever. These are both solid, so it's continuous there. What about here? I have closed and open. Does the domain actually exist at that point? If it's open and it's closed? The closed fills it in. It's kind of like there's trash in that dumpster in that spot. There's trash every location. So what can we tell you about my domain? Are, is there going to be a break at negative two and a break at three? No, this one's out. There's no breaks at negative two. There's no breaks at three. Again, union symbolizes a break. Here, do I have a break at three? No, we have no breaks there. So it's going to be negative infinity to positive infinity. So it's either C or D. Now we do the range. What's going to be different with trash compacting the range? You push everything to the right. So technically you push it to the y-axis, but for the sake of drawing this, I'm going to push it all the way to the right. You have this first piece in red. It starts here. It's smashed upward. Uh, this arrow is going up. And so I'm going to draw it as an arrow going up like that. Oops. Sorry. So we have something like this. That's what happens when I leave my desk and draw straight to the point. Not that I was ever a great artist, but it makes it harder. Okay, so there's the first piece. Now we have the parabola that comes in. Again, you're smashing it to, straight to the right. So it goes up, comes back down. And then does a solid dot right there, like that. And then what about the screen? It's open, and then it's just a line to the right. When you smash all that in, will it be open? Open. It'd be open. That open circle right here, I agree, does go open. But what about the rest of it? It just stays here. It keeps on going. So this is technically an infinite number of closed dots. So what happens when I smash all those closed dots in? It's closed. It fills in. That is closed. So all of that makes it closed right there. OK, so now when I go to do my range, when you go bottom to top, how low does this go? Negative 6. And it's closed. What does that mean if it's closed? Bracket or parenthesis? Right. Bracket. So I need negative 6 with a bracket. Not a parenthesis, D is out. Answer must be C. But just to check it, uh, does this other piece go as low as negative five? It's closed off. Does that mean bracket or parenthesis? Bracket. bracket. And up here it goes as high as infinity. And infinity is always parenthesis because it's not a real number. And actually equal it. 
All right. I've gone over a few now. It's your turn. I want you to try to find the range. Notice, I want you to find the range of this function. I gave you a graph so that after you graph it, you can put it on your packet, but then I want you to write down the range, okay? Your DOL starts now, DOL number one. All right, as we continue on now, before I move on from domain, I started with the illustration of a coin. And I said the coin has two sides to it, two faces. The math is the same, but there's two different faces. If one face of a coin, I'm going to call domain. What's the other face of the coin? Range. Uh, I see why I said that. No, that's not actually what I meant. Um, discontinuities. So domain talks about where a graph does exist. Discontinuities talk about where the, the graph does not exist. We're going to get to that at the end of the lesson. We have a few here in the middle that are their own separate deal. So let's go through these quick as quick as, uh, maybe not quick as humanly possible, but we'll go through quicker. Uh, how about this? If you had to find roots and extrema, what does roots mean? Zero. Zero. Zeros. And extrema, what does that mean? Zero. Not possible zeros or something different. Maximums, Maximums or Minimums, or you could say change of direction. So this that was not three. I hear three extremas. Do y'all think it's three extremas? Yeah. Yes. We have a relative minimum, a relative maximum, and a absolute minimum. Relative means it's not the highest or lowest on the entire graph, but the absolute means it is the absolute lowest point. There are three extrema. How many zeros? What's the maximum? Like it's like I know before it was like uh, real roots and maximum. Four zeros. This has four zeros. I'm going to get to your question in a second. I'm not ignoring you, dude. Here. Uh, four real roots and three extrema. Okay, so uh, quick vocab. I call this an absolute. Absolute. So let me start with that. Absolute means there's nothing either higher or lower, depending on which one. This is a minimum. So that means there's nothing lower. These would be called relative. So that's a relative minimum. Because there is a part of the graph that's lower, this would be a relative maximum because there is a point that's higher. Okay, there's that word. Now, I think what you're talking about, that when you say the maximum number of zeros, that's talking about if it says the total number of zeros, which is the next problem. Okay, so now when I answer Daryl's question, the next problem says a polynomial of degree four is graphed. If it's saying the degree is four, do y'all remember what that means? That means the highest power is x to the power of four. Okay, so here's what that implies on this graph. How many real zeros do you see? Two. 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 This has two real zeros. But if it has two real zeros, but the degree is four, the degree of four is telling you that there are four total zeros. So if you're, you can't see two of them, that means they are imaginary. So that would, this would have two imaginary. And I know this doesn't have a spot to write down this problem, but I'm going to go ahead. This has two imaginary zeros. So the math here is two plus two equals four total. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Uh, how many... Extrema. This problem also asks about extrema. How many extrema do you have? Three. One, two, three. Three extrema. How many of those extrema are absolutes? Two of them are absolutes. One and three are both absolutes. They're as low as the whole graph. So one and three are absolutes. What does that make? Number two? A relative maximum. That's correct. Relative maximum. Okay, uh, so that kind of solves this problem. Any questions about that one? All right, uh, and oh, thank you. And let's go on to number eighteen now. Eighteen says Mike is given the equation in this form. 
What is the greatest number of zeros and relative extrema in this function? Okay, I don't even have anything I can type in the calculator because I don't have any new numbers at all. It says A, B, C, D are real numbers, but it doesn't actually tell me what they are. So this comes out completely out of knowledge. So this is what I call a vocabulary problem. Maybe I should call it a knowledge problem. You just have to the knowledge. Uh, what's the maximum number or the greatest number of zeros? Four. Four. How do you get that? Greatest the leading term, we called it, the, uh, the leading term's exponent, the degree, it tells you right there, since my degree is four, this means the degree is four, this has at most four zeros. Now, can it also have four extremas then? No. No. It's, all, it's always one less. The extrema is one less. So some thoughts on this, if you're like, oh, like, why is that the case? Are you sure? How do we know this? I'll prove it to you through just a couple examples of how this pattern will work out. Uh, let's say you have the equation y equals x plus 1 or something like that. We'll look at that. That's the equation y equals x plus 1. What's the power of this x if it doesn't show power? 1. 1. So it's a power 1. How many zeros did that have? 1. 1, 0. And how many extrema did it have? Zero. Okay, and I'll show one more example. What if we did one that had an x squared? So that was like, say, algebra one. You learn that algebra one. You get to algebra two and you spend a lot of time with equations. Uh, let's say it's y equals x squared minus two. Y equals x squared minus two. Okay, how many zeros does this have? Two zeros. How many extremas does it have? Do you see the pattern? If I did a cube, I'll do one more. If I did a cube, I don't know what this equation is. But I'm just going to say y equals x cubed minus 2x. I'm just going to say that's what it is. I don't know if that's what it looked like or not. I need to have a plus something. I'll do plus 1. Okay, let's say that's the equation. How many zeros do you see? Three zeros. How many turns does this have? Or how many maximums and minimums? How many extrema? Two extrema. You all see the pattern? How it continues on like that? So the greatest power tells you how many zeros it could be, and you subtract one for extrema. So one less. That brings us to the all number two. All right, uh, let's move on. So now, looking at number 19, it says, what intervals is the graph either increasing or decreasing? And so I want to remind you of this word. They say intervals. Intervals is much like the word domain. It, it's not exactly the same. So domain tells you where the graph exists. What intervals is, is the x values where the graph is doing whatever the, you're supposed to be finding. But it's the x values, and you write them like domain. The only difference is you will never use brackets. So it's domain, but only using parentheses. So it's similar to domain. Uh, whenever you see intervals, you're always going to list the x values. So I'm going to say similar to domain, but you will only use with only parentheses. You'll never use brackets. Uh, I haven't seen a test where they try to trick you by using brackets, so you don't have to worry about that. I'm just saying, in general, you will only use parentheses when writing your answer. So on this one, uh, out of this one graph, how many segments of graph do you see that are increasing? Two. Two. I agree with that. Two segments are increasing. I would call this segment, and we're going to say it's increasing from this point over here all the way to this point there. I say this point, I shouldn't, that's an arrow. Ah, uh, here, negative infinity to negative one. Why did you not say like positive almost two? Because you're doing domain, which is x value. So this increases from negative infinity to negative one, that's right, negative one. So increasing from negative infinity to negative one. Okay, then on segment two, what happens from negative one to, don't tell me not negative nine. Uh, 
Okay, from negative one to three, what's the graph doing? Decreasing. Again, I'm just using parentheses. Finally, what's it doing from three onward to the right? Increasing. So I'm putting a union. Remember, anytime you have a union, it's indicating that there's a break. There's a break between increasing here and this next segment. We in increase from three. And how far do we keep increasing? Forever. So infinity. Uh, is it because this is going up forever? No, it's because it's also going right forever. And so that would be your answer to number 19. All right, and let's take a look at number 20 now. 20 says, which equation represents an asymptote for the function? Uh, something I want you to remember for asymptotes, I love this from how Ms. Mueller describes it. Ms. Mueller described that as being friend zone. Now, I don't know if you remember when we talked about this, but she describes this being friend zone. And here's what that means. If you're not aware, some of you I know are players, you don't know what that means. So I'll explain it for the people like me who know. Okay. Uh, I, Mr. Voorhees, back in the day, might have wanted to date. When I was in high school, and I wasn't Mr. Voorhees, I was just Brent. Okay. I have a girl I want to date. And uh, I go to ask her out, and she says, no. no. She says, no. Well, I keep wanting to date her. And so I keep trying to hang out with her, keep hanging out with her. And so we do become friends. But for her, She's already made up her mind. Her answer is no. no, she doesn't like bald kids in high school. So she says no, right? And uh, I keep trying to hang out with her and we might become closer and closer friends, but at the end of the day, are we dating? No. no. What, how is that gonna translate to the graph? Let's graph our values and we're gonna see. Uh, I should have gotten the... Oh, you thought I was a player? Well, I, I appreciate maybe the compliment. I don't know if that's a compliment or not. It's kind of, okay, it's not. But no, no, um, there's a reason my feelings don't get hurt much anymore. It's because I learned to get over it way back when. Sometimes it's good to get turned down a lot when you're young because you learn, you know what, life moves on. Uh, give me the answers here. A is what? Y equals? Two X minus seven. There is a life lesson in that. Life moves on, getting turned down. The more it happens to you, the stronger you become. At least that's what I tell myself. <laughs> y equals 2x. What's the next one? Minus 3. Thank you. C. X minus 4. And finally, D. All right. Uh, hopefully I didn't go too small here that I can still, I need, I need to scoot these up. All right, I'm gonna zoom in now and we are gonna graph these and see what happens. All right, so you go ahead and graph these with me, please. So I have two X cubed minus five X squared minus eight X plus one. All this is divided by X squared minus x plus five. Okay, and I'm gonna type in my answer choices and I'm gonna just leave them off each one so I can explain again what I'm doing and why I'm coming to our solution. So let me graph these as quick as I can and I'm gonna turn each one of these off. I equals x minus four and y equals x minus six. Okay, so remember what I said earlier. Asymptotes work like being friend zone. And so I'm going to show the answer that I know is most off. So you can kind of see what is not friend zone. I zoomed out a couple times there. By the way, I hit zoom out twice just to help you uh, get a better idea of what's happening. So if you want on yours, just zoom out twice or so. Uh, I'm going to turn on answer choice D because it's the most incorrect. When I graph answer choice D, this is not at all the idea of being friend zone. Here's if let's just say the girl that missed, that I was interested in is the red graph. And here I am, the black graph. As time moves on, am I getting closer and closer in a relationship with her? Or am I getting further and farther apart? Yeah, that's like I tried the best I can and I'm just failing miserably and I just need to go move on. 
Okay, that is not friend zone. Okay, so that's completely wrong. What do you think about answer choice C? I'm just gonna move my way up. As time moves on, am I getting closer and closer to the girl or am I farther and further apart? Getting further and further apart, okay. So I heard uh, we were together, okay, so maybe we dated and we were broken up, that's not friend zone, if you consider it that way. All right, uh, this one. What do y'all think on this one? Close. Do you see how it looks different? As time moves on, do I seem to get closer and closer or further and further apart? Closer and closer. Okay, now, so that's a pretty good looking answer. What about uh, answer choice A? As time moves on, am I getting closer and closer? Now, so we were together here. We are separated. Maybe it wasn't a, a bad breakup, but we're still separate. We're not together anymore. You kind of get the idea. That's not friend zone. This one, is friend zoned as time moves on, you get closer and closer. Some might say, well, it's getting so close, surely you'll be together at some point in time. Well, you yeah. zoom way in. I'm just flirting. I'm not <laughs> yeah, it's, there's just they're not ever together, just flirting. That's right. Uh, whoops. So, uh, answer choice B would be the correct answer. The algebra. The, so, um, if you were wondering, on, on a lot of these, I haven't been showing the algebra. If you were concerned on the algebra, you would do long division here. You remember when we did long division, where you'd set all that up? You remember what I'm talking about? I'm not going to do it. But if you're wanting to do this by hand, the quotient here, when you divide, is the solution. I'm hearing a lot of different voices. It's not the time to be bragging about how many people you've been friend zoned by. Okay, uh, you would divide that out and you'll see that if you remember how to do long division, you take the leading term here and this leading term, you say, okay, 2x cubed divided by the leading term of x squared. The answer is 2x. And if you did all your math, you'd end up getting 2x minus three. That's where the solution comes from is the quotient. This would be y equals the quotient. That's where that would come from if you do your algebra. So if you're curious, that's how you get there. 21, I should have given you a deal while there. I'm, I'm bad, I should have, I did not do it, but we're moving on. Maybe if you take me next year, I'll have a DOL right in this spot, insert it in. Uh, let's take a look at 21. It says for the function shown, what discontinuities are produced by the value of C? I need to update mine, mine obviously doesn't say that. So uh, your packet, what it says is for the function shown, and it's the same equation, what discontinuities are produced by the values of C shown? And the values of C that we're looking at are negative three, zero, three, and nine. So here's what I want you to do. Go over to your Desmos. I want you to type in that equation. F of X equals X cubed. minus 9x over x plus c, and there is a minus 7 on the outside on the far right. Now, if you were like me and using the star version, this is one thing I've seen that's a little bit different on the regular version of star, uh, rather regular version of Desmos. It asks you to add a slider. This one doesn't do it. So what you just need to know if you're using star version is type in C equals, and we're gonna type in our values, negative three. Now, before I do much, I just want you to observe the problem, okay? I've zoomed out so you can see a little more graph. What does the graph look like right now? Parabola, okay. I'm gonna change this C to a zero. Tell me if the shape changes. Okay, but did the shape change? Okay, so there's zero, still a parabola. What about three? Shape change? No. Okay, what about nine? Yeah, the shape changed, right? A noticeable difference. Okay, look at my instructions. Don't look at your packet now. It says a function is shown. Which value of C makes it have an infinite discontinuity? Based off of what you've just seen, which one are you going to guess the answer is? Why nine? 
because the graph looks so much different. Do you remember what infinite discontinuity means? The graph, what's discontinuity mean? It breaks. What does infinite mean with the break? It goes to infinity. If you zoomed out here, you would see that this graph breaks and look at this. You see how there's an extra piece up here? These pieces, uh, let me get this line right. Negative 15 to 15. These pieces, where are they going at the break? Infinite. You see how the other graphs were all parabolas. I, I changed my zoom. You see how that worked? All those other values look like parabolas, but at nine, there's an infinite discontinuity. So that would obviously be the answer for my problem, but yours says to describe the other discontinuity. So we just discovered nine is the infinite discontinuity. Nine has the infinite discontinuity. So what's another type of discontinuity? There's two others. What are the other two other types of discontinuities? Removable, Removable and jump. You can see jumps. Uh, does, let's go to generator three. Do I see a jump there? What would you guess is the type of break here? Removal. And it would be a removal at positive three because inside lies, if you went to positive three, uh, let me see if I can get there. Let me go home. If I went to positive three, where's positive three? Uh, inside lies, that's why I'm looking at positive three. You see how I went open circle like that? That has a removable. So on your negative three, go ahead and write that as a removable discontinuity. That one's removable. At zero, the reason that was is because inside lies. So the X value would have to be a positive three to get a uh, positive three minus this three would give me the zero and you're not allowed to divide by zero. Uh, now let's try zero. I put that in there. What does X value? It would, yeah, if it's X plus zero, you're a zero. You're gonna check at zero. What happens at zero? What does that say? Open circle. What type of break is that? Nope, that's not a jump. It's a removable. That would be a removable as well. I don't know what's going on there, but it should be showing me an open circle. Something happened. I can't figure out what it is though. Busted. It was removable the first time. I don't know what I did to it. Okay, uh, what about if we tried three? Come on, Jordan, keep that up, please. At three, you would actually check at negative three what's happening. At negative three, what happens to our graph? Open, Open circle, which means what? Removable. removable again. And so obviously the nine was the only one that was different. Okay, so I, I just did that. I don't know why I changed your packet, but I just wanted you to try some different values so you could see what they look like. So anyways, those would be removables. There's the one that's infinite. This I did give you a DOL. I want you to go through the same process. Uh, let me back up. If this were a problem and you had the multiple choice given to you, for which value C makes f of x have an infinite discontinuity? What did I do at the first before I started actually like touching the graph? What did I do first to figure out why did I, like I put a check mark here after doing something first? What was it I did first? We just saw which one looked different. Remember that? Just check them to see which value makes it look different, the picture. I want you to use the same process for your DOL. I gave you five options. I want you to graph all five of these and see which one makes this different. Beware, I changed the equation. I've had a lot of students mess this up because they just try to copy. Pretend like it's the new star. Clear, I mean, not the new star, your ACP. Clear your graph, start over. So you make sure you get the equation typed in wrong. I've had a lot of wrong answers today because I didn't quite get it correct in their calculator. So DOL number three, you go for it. All right, let's take a look. Uh, last couple here. The graph of a piecewise function is shown. What statements describe the discontinuities in this graph? And yours is that you have to describe where it has an infinite jump or infinite discontinuity, a jump discontinuity, and a removal. So let's go left to right. We've seen this picture. Remember, we talked about the domain earlier of this graph. So even this graph, if you remember, it was number 13 today. We said this one graph was four pieces, but the domain turned out to be three intervals. This one, I'm gonna show you how this differs a little bit from the domain. So this compare this later to 13. 
what would you call this break in the graph right there? That is a removable. So at x equals negative two, we have a removable discontinuity, which is just like when we had the domain, that was a break in the domain. It's negative three. Just making sure you're paying attention. Thank you. Okay, so now we came to three. Do you remember when we did this domain at the beginning of the day? Did we actually say this was a break in the domain? No. No, but it is. This is why domain and discontinuities aren't 100% opposite. I'll say it's 95% opposite. That even though this is not a break in the domain, this is a type of discontinuity. What type of discontinuity is this in the function? This is a jump. X equals three is a jump, but I want you to know for domain purposes, that would be continuous domain between this segment and this segment. Finally, what's the break at four gonna be called? Infinite, why? Because at the break, it's taking off and heading to infinity. So that'd be an infinite discontinuity there at four, okay? 23, Polly's given a rational function. What discontinuities did Polly discover upon her investigation of this function? So uh, I'm gonna tie this into domain because remember how domain and discontinuities are 95% opposites of one another. For domain, what are you not allowed to do with division? Divide by zero. Divide by zero. We're gonna have breaks where this function divides by zero. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go graph it. And well, actually, instead of me telling you, you tell me. After we graph it, what should we do to help ourselves find the actual answers? Not all at once. So plus four, yeah, plus four. What should we do to help ourselves find the answers? Yeah, how do I know where I can see one break? You could drag it. There's an easier way, though. What are you not allowed to do with division? Do you remember what I did earlier to try to cheat my way? Or what's the strategy? Graph the denominator. The graph will break wherever the denominator is zero. So this will tell us, the denominator will tell us how many breaks will this have? How many breaks will it have? The denominator tells us two. It'll break at negative three and two. So now I know it breaks at negative three and two. So on yours, it says, uh, the first blank says continuous, continuous for all values of X. Except, and what are the two values where this breaks? Negative three, negative three, only two. Negative three and two. That's where the breaks are going to be, negative three and two. So now I'm going to take that away and let's look. At negative three, what type of break is it? It's removable. It's an open circle. So we need to go to number three or negative three because the denominator. So it's a removable at negative three. Whoops, negative three is removable. And what happens at x equals positive two? That's an infinite. You can see that one right away. Infinites and jumps, you can see. Removables, you have to slide around. All right, 24. What statement most accurately describes the discontinuities in this graph? Oh, yes, we get to review this function. Do y'all remember the name? for a function with multiple pieces? Piecewise. Piecewise, great. The way to graph this on Desmos is not to be typing in f of x equals squiggly bracket. Rather, we do use a squiggly bracket, but we move it to a different place. Do you remember where we move that? Yeah, so what I'm gonna do here is kind of cover that up for a moment. And we're gonna do that squigglies where if it said if, you would do it where the if is. This one has a comma. That's where the squiggly is gonna go, right there. And so we're going to do this on two separate lines. Let's graph this and see what happens. So lockdown browser, I clear everything out. The first function, not the first function, but the first piece of the function is 2x squared plus 3x minus 2 divided by x plus 2. 
now I have a restriction that X must be less than one. It automatically will close it, which I should have put on mine over here. I should have a closed and a closed. I should have done that. And then my second piece of the function is negative X squared plus two X, no plus two restricted where X is greater than or equal to one. So obvious question here, as I zoom out to make sure this like shark fin looking thing, do you see any infinite discontinuities? Do you see any infinites? That means where it breaks and goes to infinities. Do you see any infinite discontinuities? No, and that's not even an option. Do you see any jumps? No, you can look where they hit. They, they don't have a jump. So we know it has no jump discontinuities, which eliminate what? How many options if there's no jump discontinuities? That eliminates A and C. Okay, so it's either B or D, meaning there's a removal or uh, it's continuous. Now, if I check this function, I'm gonna click here the black and drag it up to the point. You see how it looks like it's undefined at one? You got to be careful because if you click the red and go to one, it is now filled in. So is that removable or is it uh, is it continuous or not continuous? Black is open. Red is closed at one. So what's it mean? It's continuous there. However, what's tricky is this does have a removable, but it has it somewhere else. What do you mean? What do you say to make that? It is continuous, but it's not continuous. It's actually removable. Okay, at the point, at the shark fin point, I'm going to call it. That is continuous. But what are you not allowed to divide by? Zero. Here, we have a problem on this one. We have a problem at negative two. Now, how do I know it's negative two? Because inside lies. And you can see at negative two, this graph will be broken apart. At negative two, let me, uh, why is it not clicking anymore? Let me turn that off. Uh, that's not working good for me. That's not what I wanted. Let me uh, re graph this. Okay, at neg if I go to negative two, this would be undefined because you cannot divide by zero. So there's still, there is a removable, but it's not that shark fin point. It's that point at negative two. So this has a removable at X equals negative two. Now let's take a look at 25. Which function has a removable discontinuity at X equals two? So let's go through some of the, the same processes or same techniques we've been looking at. So I'll graph this first function. I'm going to call it f1 since they're all f of x, just to make clear of it. Actually, no, I won't. It's a piecewise. Let me back up. Sorry. Piecewise with Desmos. If you're going to graph that, we need to move the squiggly right here. And so the first graph, I, I would not actually include that. So I'm going to cover it up here in white. And with Desmos, I would cover it up this way. Let's see if this has a removable at x equals 2. So we have 3x minus 1. 3x minus 1, and this domain is limited or uh, restricted to x being less than or equal to 2. So there's that portion of the graph. And then we have x squared when x is greater than 2. So we have this, and as I look in here, um, to zoom in, uh, it appears at 2 there is a jump discontinuity. So we'll say jump discontinuity for this one. Jump at x equals two. Okay, and so now let's move on. We're looking for removable. So now we'll try b. I'm just gonna turn these off in case I need them again. Uh, b says that f of x equals x minus two over x squared minus nine. Now take a look at this one. I, I look over at two and it appears that this is continuous at two. Not only is it continuous, it has a y-intercept at x equals two. So I'm just gonna put uh, not a y-intercept, an x-intercept. So this is continuous. Oops, forgot the 
continuous at x equals two. That actually had a zero at x equals two. That's a zero there. Okay, so now let's try part C, f of x equals x squared plus two x over x squared minus four. Okay, at two, it appears this one has an infinite discontinuity. So this one's infinite at x equals two, an infinite discontinuity at x equals two, and which means the answer should be D, because we haven't found a removable yet. Let's make sure I don't have a typo. So x squared plus two x minus eight, all divided by x squared minus two x. This graph, I'm looking at two, and when I get to two, I do see, in fact, oh, that's a good sign. Uh, we have an open circle, which means this is removable at x equals two. So this one would be removable at x equals two. D is our answer. Which takes us to our DOL and our last and final one. So I want you to find what type of discontinuity is present in this function. There is a discontinuity. Uh, I'll let you graph it and find it. Think about division, what you're not allowed to divide by. They'll help you know where to look uh, to find your discontinuity in this one. Deal number four. <laughs>